Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Jocker Rogers. Coming up on the program today. Senate President Dr. Bukola Saraki says APC-led federal government remains committed to turning Nigeria's fortunes around for the better promises for the better promises payment of state workers, salaries, and national economic revamp. PDP and APC candidates in Imo North senatorial election claim victory as INEC again declares election inconclusive. And police investigations ongoing in an alleged child abuse case, Ogun Police Command promised to prosecute culprits. Our first story today is centered around the state of the nation. The Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, is urging Nigerians to be patient with the APC-led government as it works round the clock to turn around the fortunes of Nigeria for good. Dr. Saraki was speaking to journalists in Indore, the Kwara State Capital, during a visit to the state governor, Abdul Fattah Ahmed. He touched on issues ranging from salaries of workers and teachers in the local governments across the country to revamping the nation's economy. This is an area that we spent a day discussing because we believe it's a matter that requires not us for leave it just to local government. The matter now is beyond local government. It's even beyond states. My view and the view of the Senate is that this should be a national matter. Uh, we cannot be putting funds to uh, you beg for building of classrooms, science equipment, or even to tertiary institutions. When the foundation, primary school teachers are not being paid, who is going to go to the classrooms that we are going to build? So we must address it as a national issue. And that is our plan as the Senate, that once, even during the recess and when we resume, to engage with, with the executive arm and see how we can come together. We have been giving uh, all sorts of support. I believe believe that uh, payment of teacher's salary is not just recurrent because it's key to the foundation of education and it's key to whatever capital investment. There's no point you putting investing in a classroom when there's no teacher that will turn up because you have not paid he or her. So this is the area that we're doing and we moved the motion last time, a resolution to address this and we're going to follow it up to see. So I want to uh, reassure the teachers all around the country that definitely something is going to be done for us to address this. This is a challenge that it must mean that we must think out of the box, we all work hard and that's what we're doing. As you saw last week, we summoned the Minister of Finance and put a challenge that up for a while. We had passed the resolution since May that both the Governor and Central Bank must come and tell us what are we doing about this economy. And I'm sure part of this hack shout has led to them this month. We've seen the allocation has improved significantly. And I'm confident with that that all local governments should be able to pay full salary for the workers. So the message is now to ensure true oversight that we hold the executive to ensure that they ensure that all revenues do come in. But there are a number of challenges too that we must admit. The challenges that is going in the Niger Delta area. It is important that we dialogue. It's important that we seek peace. It has, we have had this challenge before, but we, it was resolved. And I think whoever can bring that peace, we must sit down because the impact in one part affects the entire country. But I want to show you that uh, definitely it is not by design that these challenges came, but we are capable and able to meet those challenges. As, a, as, as an APC uh, government, the, 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 the difference I keep on saying is that there is serious commitment to address it. There's commitment of purpose and sincerity of, of purpose. Senate President Dr. Bukola Saraki. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime has pledged 100 million naira towards fighting drug-related crime, corruption and human trafficking in Nigeria. Country representative for the agency, Christina Albertin, made this known during her visit to Channel's television today. She said the amount is higher than most other countries because the UN considers Nigeria a strategic partner in Africa. Later, she talked about the UN's efforts at helping Nigeria fight corruption, 
working within the framework of the UN Convention Against Crime. Working in the framework of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, which is again a global framework by, that was agreed upon by all the UN member states. So it's a universal instrument that was ratified by Nigeria. Nigeria was very active in the elaboration of this uh, document. And if you look at the convention, it talks about uh, three major issues. Again, it is the penalization of corrupt offenses. And corruption offenses is, offenses is not limited only to uh, paying bribes or to uh, taking bribes. It could, for example, also include trafficking of influence, obstruction of justice, bribery of foreign officials. So there's a whole set of corruptive, uh, corrupt offenses that has been defined in the, in the convention that countries that have ratified it, the state parties, have to penalize. The second pillar is the, the investigation and prosecution of these crimes so that we have a successful um, conviction. Uh, the third pillar is the prevention of uh, corruption and the fourth pillar is uh, asset recovery because of course countries that have lost um, assets to corruption, they want to have that money back. So we work in this framework with 14 agencies in, uh, of the federal government to address corruption in Nigeria. Country representative of the UN ODC, Christina Alpertin, in Channel's television today. The House of Representatives is under pressure to allow the anti graft agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, investigate allegations of budget padding by the lawmakers. The Executive Director of Social Economic Rights and Accountability, Serap Adetokumbo Mumuni, who was our guest on our morning show, Sunrise Daily, said the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, as a matter of urgency, must step in and investigate the padding allegations. There's this fundamental principle in adjudication. You cannot investigate yourself. The result will be predictable. Let me tell you, if the House of Representatives is speaker, consists of a panel as it is, or there is a standing panel, the result will be predictable because it is a matter, all you will hear subsequently will be, we have held an intelligence section and the thing has been resolved, you will hear any other thing. You see, the reference should not be to the, from any of them, it should not be that somebody is referring anything to the ICPC. In senior environments, when matters of probity, accountability becomes matter of public knowledge, the appropriate organs set up by the government to handle such things will come automatically. Nobody should refer any other anything. This EFC is just waiting. This is a matter of public interest, a matter of public concern. And to election matters ahead of the September 10th governorship election in Edo State, the All Progressives Congress has continued its campaign for votes amongst the, the electorate. The party today at the Samuel Ogbemudia Stadium, Benin City, met the market women associations from the 18 local government areas of the state to woo more votes. Speaking to thousands of supporters and party leaders at the venue, the APC candidate, Mr. Godwin Obasaki, promised to, amongst other things, improve access to soft loans for the market women, provide a health care center in every market with up to a thousand traders and rebuild market structure across the state. The incumbent governor, Adam Sashomali, also explains to traders why the party chose Mr. Obasaki to continue from where he would stop. As the campaign build, builds momentum, the APC says it will leave nothing to chance in retaining the support of its electorate. When we come back on news across Nigeria, we'll have more election stories for you, for instance, uh, from Imo State, and we'll be having an extensive discussion about the controversies there. Do stay with us.